greetings folks. Uh, I'm just about to take my new little drift dark breeze version out for a fly for the first time. Uh, perfect for sloping conditions, so we'll take it for a slope saw first. Uh, later on I'll show you what comes in the box. It's exactly the same as the original little drift, uh, just that it's uh, the dark foam. The dark foam is a little bit heavier, but it only adds about 15 grams overall to the whole weight of the plane. So not a lot really, may even make it a better sloper with a little bit more weight. Anyway, it's a new release from Zod, good to see that they're uh, in action again after uh, difficult times with COVID and all that sort of stuff. I'm dressed appropriately with my lucky blue flying socks which match the little motor there, uh, all in ninja black because that's the kind of plane it is. Might make it actually a bit easier to see against a, a, a light sky, although you do have orientation problems sometimes with an all black plane. but. Um, it's, it's a wonderful little plane, uh, one of my favourites. Works really nice as a sloper, just a fun flying acrobatic little plane or FPV. Uh, you can put the co-pilot light in there with GPS, it's specifically made for that. And a little VC400 uh, all-in-one camera in the front uh, and have a really good FPV experience. At the moment I have 2S18650-3000 in there. Anyway, it's time to go for a fly. Now it's marketed as a beginner's plane, but I really don't think it is a beginner's plane. It's, it's just a bit too nimble and too agile. Of course, it's a lot more docile with a flight control board. Uh, but starting off with a new plane and a flight control board is the, not the way for a beginner to go. You really need to learn how to fly the plane first. The basics of flight, basics of uh, radios, before you go mucking around with flight control boards. Uh, thinking it's going to save you because it's just going to make your life harder. Now the way the throws are set up initially are way too much for a beginner. Uh, you really need to dial in some expo, reduce the rates, move the holes in further but you can't actually so uh, yeah reduce the rates and use expo but anyway let's see how we can go at the moment. Yes nice don't need to use motor at all look at that that looks cool. All black looks cool. I'm going nose down at the moment, so I'm obviously a bit nose heavy. I mean, sorry, yes. I need to do some trim. There we go. All right now. That's a cool little plane. Look at that, it just wants to do loops, rolls, flips. Awesome, no rudder, only elevator and ailerons, and the ailerons are on a Y lead, so really simple connection. Now that loves gliding on the slope. Still going nose down, but I've run out of trim, so I might have to uh, do a bit of an adjustment. Let's do that. Nice landing. All right, let's go again. So I have my 18650 2S in there and I've just got it sort of held in there uh, with a little block of foam with Velcro on it. That's where the co-pilot or uh, little F411 flight control board can go. GPS goes under that cover there. Receiver is jammed in there. I've just got a, a D4R, I think it is, an old school FR Sky receiver. No, re, no telemetry or anything. We don't need it though. And we're up and away. There we go. That's that's looking good now. There's enough wing area for you to put a camera on there, which I will, of course, later on. It's it's as I said, it's a bit too agile and nimble for a beginner. Um, I saw Lee Schofield's um, review from a couple of weeks ago and and he said the same thing that I think. A slightly bigger version would be awesome. Uh, a Drift XL. So yeah, I'd, I'd uh, back his call for Zod to come up with a 
slightly bigger version of the drift I think it would be awesome more room inside easier to put your flight control board in a little bit more docile better for a beginner I think it would be such a winner something about the same size as the razor but with a pusher oh, yeah with a pusher motor would be would be brilliant Yeah, look at that that's so cool stable little plane that's hands off there a little bit of uh, dihedral makes it really stable these are really well designed they just click together there's no glue no it's just a couple of thumb screws and clicking the um, elevator push rod in the wings just click in and make an electrical connection as well little spar between them really nice uh, control horns that are reinforced with little spars uh, yeah, it's just it's a well designed model as most of the Zod planes are comes with a little motor <coughs> you can have 4S uh, you can have 2S or 3S and they provide different props for 2S and 3S this is the 2S prop I'm running on 2S um, I have used 3S with this prop as well and it, it's fine uh, it can handle it. it has a 30 amp ESC I think so uh, it's not going to run not going to hurt the ESC at all I have the I've programmed up the ESC to have the prop brake on so it's not freewheeling which causes more drag I haven't even turned the motor on, don't need to. Now although these things are sort of nimble and aerobatic, uh, our friend Pavel has shown that uh, if you put it into a screaming dive and it sort of uh, flies beyond the speed limit, the wings will flex and you'll lose control. Uh, so although you can do a hell of a lot we can't put it into a big dive here and it's still absolutely fine but maybe loaded up a big screaming dive on FPV you may lose control uh, because of the wing flex but flown within normal parameters it's uh, absolute beauty all right camera time Whee! crash resistant too So yeah, it's still going fine with the camera on there, uh, a little bit more draggy, a bit more uh, nose heavy I think, uh, but still going well, it's uh, handling the weight with no problems at all. Doesn't want to do a loop though. A bit too draggy on there. Certainly slowed it down a bit. Look at our friend go. <laughs> oh, amazing. Great little plane. Having to use a fair bit of up elevator, so yeah, I think I'm a bit nose heavy there.
Anyway, I'll bring it into land and uh, go and have a chat about it. Okay, having a closer look at the setup now. Uh, so I'm using a D4R, FR Sky, Sky D4R2, old school uh, D8 protocol receiver. And uh, this shows where I connected the uh, elevator push rod. So that's the, the middle hole. Could easily go to an inner hole if you want to uh, reduce the rates a little bit. But um, that's what I used. Now the model set up on the Zorro 4-in-1 radio. Uh, it here we go in the uh, internal RF module is uh, the multi module. Uh, the type, the protocol type is FR Sky D, and the subtype type is D8. So get the D4R uses the D8 protocol, and no inputs. Uh, mixes are very simple. Channel 1, 100% aileron with 40% expo. That's because it's so agile and the, the, uh, the control surface movement is so great you need to sort of tame it down a bit. Yeah, so expo 40 uh, and elevator, 100% uh, elevator and 30% expo and just 100% throttle. Uh, that was working well on the slope, uh, but it is quite acrobatic. So if you're flying on a flat field, you could probably you know, reduce them down as much as... 50% uh, for a smoother flying experience and the onboard footage was a run cam thumb uh, I just taped that up there with electrical tape just needs 5 volts power so I plug that into channel 4 on the receiver uh, and that gets 5 volts from the ESC so there we go the Zod Drift Dark Breeze edition uh, it's the same plane as the original Drift just in black foam which is just a tiny bit heavier uh, still a great plane uh, still one of my favourite Zod planes and uh, highly recommended for me. Maybe not a beginner's plane, maybe uh, a second plane after you know how to fly, but uh, a great little FPV, slope soarer, little acrobatic plane. Thanks for watching.